is it about food that makes you so passionate about it and interested well, in I'm, it? Well, I'm greedy. <laughs> <Is> that, <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's the best reason of all, I, I suppose. I think so. I don't, you know, I, I'm very uh, nervous when people talk about it as a great art. I mean, I think one of the interesting things about cooking is that it's just, it's practical, but there is an element that goes beyond that. But, you know, I started doing more cooking in a sense when I used to have to write a column or something like that I would find just stirring something or chopping something would let me think about things in a way yes and um, and then I realized that actually there was a lot to be said for mindless repetitive activity <laughs> um, and that's why I went into television <laughs> uh, so, anyway, so I find anyway so that I like cooking and I like eating, and I like that thing of feeding people. I mean, when I, we make the programs, you know, at the beginning, there's a big sort of health and safety thing, and no one's allowed to eat the food. If they do, that's at their own risk. You're not covered by insurance, and I take it all very personally. Mm. But what I like about the fact is the minute the director says cut, you know, the camera's down and everyone's eating the food. And in a way, it doesn't interest me if I'm not feeding people. But the, but the style of a presentation, which, is, which has earned you this celebrity, in a sense, I mean, it has made a huge difference. I mean, was that in, in contrived? I mean, not to start with, but did you get this sense of, right, we've got something here. It's a, it's a good gimmick, this. Let, let's extend it. Let's play No, it. I don't think so. I have to say, it's, it was very difficult after the first series, because when you do the first series, you're just doing what you do without any thought really of being seen, which is a, maybe a naive thing to say when you're doing television, but of course when you're doing it, you're just doing it. And then once critics have said things or viewers have said things, then you start thinking, I, I don't want to get self-conscious, which is why actually I never watch the programme. <laughs> but, you know, a lot of it is what's done in the editing room and how it's done on no, camera. No, it's you. you know. It's you. Well, it's I babble. I tell you what, I do it. I'm not scripted. I just go into this kind of babble that you hear now. Yes. And About so disemboweling lemons. Yeah. And, and putting your hands into soft and... <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it, it, it gets them going wherever it is now. <laughs> I, mean, they, I like doing it, and I well, think that's quite important. Like, uh, well, again, I mean, uh, it doesn't work unless you're enthusiastic. No, I, I mean, that's the other thing that comes across. I mean, we've got the greatest exponent of that coming on later on, David Attenborough. Yeah. I mean, you know, never lost that sense of wonder and that, about things. But I mean, what about? I mean, what's interesting to you? You're a journalist. I mean, and so if you were writing a column now and you looked at yourself, I would be so horrible about myself. Would you? <laughs> yeah. oh, would you really? Actually, the funny thing is, when How to Be a Domestic Goddess came out and I was you know, railed against for being you know, a traitor to the sisterhood, despite the fact that it was so obviously ironic. Um, I felt, you know, if I'd been filing a column, I would have done exactly the same, so I feel fine, you know. <laughs> We've all got inches to fill, so uh. therefore, let's not worry about it. But what about, what about when you're, when you're satirised, when the comedians get older, when they send you up? What do, what do you think about that? You, you, you've seen that happen, haven't you? I mean, you don't. Yes, but if it makes me laugh, I'm fine. I mean, I don't take well, myself seriously, I can tell you.